Hello everyone and welcome back to Dragon Age Inquisition. This is episode 58. Last time we went to the Shattered Library and it was just so much lore for us to uncover there. It was a, such a significant episode, not just to the events of this game, uh, this DLC, but also Dragon Age and Thetis as a whole. Just spectacular. And we are now going to be using the Keystone to activate the Alluvian leading to the Davarad. Uh, I'm not sure if this is a... Uh, it it's really feels like it's like coming to a head here. We've got like this music just pounding, ready to go. It's just been building up this whole time to potentially uh, the finale. We'll have to see how we go. Uh, it's nighttime, so all of our companions are asleep. <laughs> no one's around, no one for us to talk to. Ooh, however, I do have to still run around because what would I, what kind of gamer would I be if I wasn't reading all the lore I could find? Paper dog. A collection of letters, invitations, urgent messages, and other sundry papers all addressed to the Viscount of Kirkwall. Someone has folded them into the shape of a Mabari sticking out his tongue. Okay. Hang on. We need to go and take a look around. There might be lore where all of the characters used to be. If there's one for Varric. Let's see how we go. Uh, this is where Dorian was. Nothing here. There is people walking around. Here's something. Yeah, there are notes to read. Uh, Lichet, oh, I don't know how to say that. Licentious gossip? Notes carried back and forth by runners covered in different handwriting. Have you seen that magnificent creature by the gazebo? Such a powerful frame when he struts about. It's so charming seeing him behave as if he owned the place. Commander's new dog is precious as well. Oh, we've got like gossip about our group. So Cullen being oogled. It's the lovely Lady Pentagast that's caught my fancy. Make her those eyes. That's the most holy you're slavering over. Besides, does she even know your name? <laughs> as if fate would be so kind. Interesting. Cullen and Cassandra being swooned over naturally. Uh, yeah, there's quite a few pieces for us to discover before we head to the Davrad. Ooh, saucy. I thought that was Ban Tegan for a second because he's got wearing the same hat. I'm like, Ban Tegan? Under armed guard, too. Letter to Arl Tegan. I spoke with relatives on the Elysian side of my family, and they also don't know why the Inquisition's guards are suddenly everywhere. Everyone is nervous. Maybe now the Winter Palace won't be so... Sang sanguine, sanguine, sang sanguine about the Inquisition's forces at this council, or the standing army to the east. They did say Lavellan looks preoccupied. She has certainly spent enough time locked up with her advisors. Everyone's waiting to see what will come. Van Water. <laughs> They're having an intimate moment. We've got like two armed guards here, and then just some dude watching on the couch. And then some dude, or, uh, not dude, some lady chilling out on the couch. Everyone's just enjoying watching the action. An intimate moment, I must watch. Okay, we got something here. A ruined picnic. Kennel, now that you mention it, that elf hanging about the tavern does look familiar, but I can't imagine why she would have been at your cousin's wedding. <laughs> Perhaps she was one of the servants attending on Duke Verney. After he slipped into the mud pond and onto that wasp's nest at the picnic? Maker, I'm still not sure how that happened. Amazing. Sarah's been like infiltrating noble events and like causing a ruckus. Wager notes. Uh, notes carried back and forth by runners, covered in different handwriting. Have you seen Ambassador, Ambassador Montillier trying to cool everyone's tempers after the Inquisitor ran out of the Exalted Council? The goal! Lavellan has some nerve. Have you noticed the runners at the Divine's quarters? Everyone is demanding the most holy address, the, uh, the most holy address, the affront. If anything, the Inquisitor's actions strengthened Ferelden's position. Arl Tegan is fuming. Lord Cyril won't let him push. This is as good as sealed, my friends. We'll see. So they're continuing to do their, their wages from the, uh, from the last note that we saw, which is really funny. 
We read some wages last time. Someone else is with the dog this time. That's so funny. <laughs> the dog stays there. Um, I don't think any came up above there. Nothing's coming up on the map when I search, so I think we are safe. That's getting more and more concerning over there. It's weirder at night. Everything's so weird. Wager notes once again. If so many royals went in jeopardy, Leonard, I'd say we should let the che Chevaliers through the Inquisition out the Winter Palace. We're in accord. Their puffed up soldiers are everywhere. One challenged me at the gate because the fool confused my house's mask with a family not even invited. Why do they think they're in charge if they can't master even basic courtesies? Disgusting. I caught an Inquisition soldier and a palace guard in a fistfight. What happened? I stopped the fight, of course. We don't need this exalted council further out of hand. Terrible thought occurs. What if nothing gets decided? What happens to our wager, gentlemen? Mika forbid! If that comes to pass, we can give the royals to that farm your sister runs for retired charges, Leonard. At least the old warehouses. War horses. <laughs> Won't be left out in the cold. I literally read that as warehouse. I should look around. Well, at least they're going to uh, donate it to a good cause, I suppose. Okay, we've got more around here. Oh. We've also got fireworks? The moon's looking huge tonight. We got fireworks. Such changeable weather this season. All right, let's see what Sarah's added in here. Cram is still in here. Oh my god, everyone's in here. Everyone's in the tavern, but no one's drinking. Okay, Sarah's past the now thing, so we should have um, this one. We definitely read those, and then many empty pages, one that is dog-eared. Uh, when wonder we wear wonder's whittle, words, a lovingly completed drawing of Dagna smiling. The nose is smudged, possibly by a kiss. Also, there is an arrow pointing to it that says, kiss smudge from kissing. <laughs> okay, that's very, very cute. So Sarah can romance the dwarves, but we can't. Uh, uh, guys, everyone get out of my way. I love the idea of our companions forming relationships with, like, other characters in the world. That's really nice. Like, having, um, yeah, Sarah and Dagna, and then you've got, um, Bull and Dorian. It's just kind of cool. Like, if you don't romance them, the, the characters will also get together. <laughs> it's fun. What is that? Yeah. Pair of paddles. I have a pair of paddles. Oh. Small pair of wooden paddles with leather grips used for some measure, manner of leisure sport. Presumably, that's definitely not sexy. Um, I think something that I need to pick up as well, it might still be there. Um, is down this way. Is it still? Is there still stuff down here? Yeah, just a group. Oh, nothing new down here that we've read. Just a bunch of random people standing around. I've got a note to read out here. Emergency measures. The order has been given. All known double agents within the Inquisition are being neutralized and all suspect agents are being isolated from any information coming in or out of the Winter Palace. We've received messenger birds back from multiple cities. The Inquisition is not the only organization compromised by Kunari spies. In Val Rayo, Gatlock barrels were being put into position by low place service servants in the Grand Cathedral and Council of Heralds. In Denerim, Canari spies were revealed among low-ranking members of the City Watch. Starkhaven was seeded with spies among its own palace servants. In light of our lack of oversight on this matter, I will understand if an agent better suited to the task is promoted in my place. A reply below in Liliana's hand. 
the blame falls on me. I will not let anyone else appropriate it, no matter how well intended. Do not forget the lives we've saved by warning other cities about the Gatlock barrels. Besides, my friend, I have enough scandalous gossip on you that I know I can trust you. Of how many other agents is this true? The following line is in the original handwriting. At least 23, my lady, but your point is taken. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, so something that's like really, really cool about this uh, is I just, I really didn't expect the Canari to come in and that's the point, right? That's exactly what's happened. They've taken everybody by surprise. Canari agents have infiltrated everywhere because that's what they've established. The Kuhn is not limited just to Canari. There are many that have been converted and then they get put out into the world and they blend in and people can't find or detect that because they just operate as normal until like the signal, you know, until they're given the the command to start doing stuff. So they've got Kuhn agents all around like Thetis right now. We're at war with the Canari. They're moving in big time. It's not just this distant thing of just, oh yeah, uh, the Canari and Tevinter are fighting in the background all the time. It's like, oh no, they've completely bypassed them and they're here right now, uh, which is uh, which is definitely a scary thought. All of a sudden, I'm not uh, feeling like sympathizing with uh, the Kuhn in the way that I have previously. <laughs> Because I'm like, they're actually advancing quite significantly from the shadows. The Kuhn brainwashing was working on me, guys, in previous Dragon Age experiences. I was like, you know what? I like this Iron Bull. And you know what? I like this uh, Kuhn concept in some way in during Dragon Age 2. But then, obviously, it's good that the Bull is not part of the Kuhn anymore because he wanted to be with us instead so he has become Talvashoth so we can still like we can still like bull <laughs> which is good all right same team same team oh the keystone was the blood mirror that makes so much sense cool I think we can go straight in it's pulling you apart oh god if I die, I'm glad to have known you. No matter what happens, it has been my honor to fight beside each of you. We helped, all of us. I won't forget. Enjoy me while you can. I expect you'll all miss me terribly later. It's been an honor to kick asses beside you all. Anan. Anan. And you, Kadan. Okay, now we can activate this. All right, everyone, get ready. Get ready. We're going in. Wow. This is the Dalvarad. Look at this. It's an alluvian graveyard. Where did the Kunari get all these? How long have they been studying alluvians? The sooner we stop this invasion plan, the better. Wow, okay. Look at this. Big woman. Look at this place. The Darvrad in the fortress approach, okay. They've been studying and then destroying Alluvians or studying broken ones, potentially. In the same way that Meryl was. I mean, it's just so funny to me because, like, I try not to speak about it, but whenever I think about Alluvians, I always just think about Monsters, Inc. <laughs> just, like, all of the little Monsters, Inc. doors, and they're all broken.
Gotcha. Okay. We've got Veil Fire. So they were casting magic on this one. Luvian Studies. The writing on these pages is completely incomprehensible, even to a native speaker of Kunlat. The handwriting resembles the scratches of an inebriated chicken, but the drawings are meticulous. An excruciatingly careful study of several Alluvians, along with exploded diagrams of their inner workings. Remember when Alluvians were just like the most special and rare thing? to exist you're like oh my god there's like still one alluvian in the world right and now it's just like oh yeah so um you want some mirrors we've got mirrors baby they're everywhere they've been getting tucked away and collected and studied oh we should hurry here they come! I'm really concerned about what's going to happen to our Inquisitor. Like, like quite genuinely, I'm like, are we going to fucking... Are we going to die? <laughs> like, I know that it's possible for your characters to die because, like, your Warden can die in Origins, you know? I'm just like... I wish I could say I'm surprised that Vitasala wants to murder everyone, but it makes sense. We tell stories about how corrupt the South is. Who wouldn't want to kill the evil nobles and save the people? I'm genuinely concerned for the well-being of my character. She might not make it. With this stu stupid hand wound. Uh Alright, where are you? Come on, give me a coward. The patrol. You want to take them out one at a time, fast, or we'll have a mess on our hands. Just gotta carry this thing everywhere. Oh god, there you are. Spearman is so huge, dude. He's a big boy. Bully him in the corner. Belt of retaliation and a key. That's quite the door it is. I've lost my Veilfire torch already, but there's. Ah, oh, hang on. Okay. Um, before I go back to get my veil fire torch, I'll see if I can actually see what this stuff is for. Oh man. Logs of a Davarad gatekeeper. The entries in this book are written in several different hands and occasionally e even different languages. From the few entries in the common tongue, it appears to be a log filled in by the various guards who have watched the gates of the Davarad. Morning. Artifacts brought in by Hisra Kith. Original location not on manifest. Asked Iskari, was told they're from ruins. Please remind agents that all relics must be properly catalogued or the Tarbus will never stop complaining about it. Afternoon. Three Kiths deployed. Including Iskari of Hisra Kith. Told her to write down locations in her manifest this time. Evening. Hisra Kith reported back. Iskari handed me manifest that just said, Outside Davarad. Asking my sten for a knife. <laughs> The canary got jokes. There's a nug. What the fuck? What are you doing here? There's a golden nug. Why? Alright, I'm gonna blow up your stuff. That was the that was the signal for war. We've just unleashed the we've just signaled them. 
research tower. Hello? Hey? Yeah. I got red lyrium in here. Researching red lyrium. I love that I can just hear the. Do the Kunari have any idea what they're dealing with? The song is different, but the pieces fit together. Ah! The the amount of lore about the song that they keep dropping on me here. All right, gatehouse key. The pieces fit together. Oh my god. We're going through the Descent DLC talking about the rhythm and the melody and the harmony and the song. Ah, oh, yeah. Oi. This letter was clearly written a few lines at a time over the course of multiple days as the ink at the start has already faded slightly. Elf, who is Talus? Holy shit, hang on. This is, uh, Mark the Assassin, Talus? Her name is Talus, right? Our first converted member of the Qun in the Dragon Age 2 DLC, I'm pretty sure. If I remember right. It is no longer my role to instruct others in the Qun, but I will share what I can with you if it brings you peace. You are not alone in your struggles to achieve mastery of yourself and your purpose. Many Vidathari come to the Qun filled with fear and anger. These feelings build walls brick by brick within the self. They prevent you from seeing the others around you, from seeing the world as it is. And they convince you that you are alone and in darkness, that you must fend for yourselves. The walls are real, but the darkness and the solitude, the world that they create within the self, that is all illusion. You must work to tear down the walls if you wish to see the truth. And the truth is this, no one is alone. It was the wisdom revealed to Coslin in the desert long ago. What looks like solitude is connectedness. What looks like darkness is only the space between stars. This portion of the letter is slightly newer, and the handwriting, which was exceptionally tidy at first, has become somewhat looser, as if written in a hurry. And it is not just Vidathari who struggle with these illusions. The world changes the self, and we must balance mastery upon its turning tides. Once I was an Ashkari, and I spent my days examining the philosophy of the Kune and trying to seek the enlightenment that Koslin found, but my dreams of demons took me down a new path. Here the writing is filled with crossed out passages and the script becomes shaky. Some of the ink is still wet. And now I, and now with the song liquid crossed out, and now I study the dam which holds back magic at its source, we will crossed out. It is our purpose to crossed out. Things change, little Talus. The world changes. Find purpose in people around you and your role will be clear. Remember when crossed out? It will be hard to find wisdom in the noise. The noise is an illusion, like the darkness, but the walls are real. Remember that. Tear down the walls first, and you will see the truth. Hmm. Hmm. Sarath. If I'm remembering this correctly, I'm pretty sure this is uh, Dragon Age 2... Mark of the Assassin stuff? I believe so. Uh, I'm just going to look up Mark of the Assassin. Uh, yeah, Talus. And then... So this is addressed to Talus. And she was... Okay, I think she, what she was talking about... Salit, which is a high-ranking Ben Hasroth agent. I was wondering if this was going to be if this was the same name, but it's not. But yeah, this is a this is a codex entry for Talus from Dragon Age Two, which is really cool. Still connecting the lore. Um, let's go down. Hey, bud. Is that an Australian? How did the Kunari move it here? A word of advice, stay away from the glowing pyramid. Oh, this is like a Tevinter thing. Look at what they have. They have a um, they have a shard for the Forbidden Oasis. They've got an Astrarium. They've got something that I'm assuming is Tevinter related because of how what Dorian said. They've got the, the, the thingies, the dream slain crystal shard findy thingies. 
It's the best name for it. They've got a fucking egg on the wall. I don't know what the deal is with that. Look, they've got everything. They've even, they're even like, fuck it, bring the Dreadwolf statue here. I didn't even need that Veilfire torch because there was just one here. <laughs> um, okay, let's go back up. Guess we're going to go check out this golden nug. There's so much detail to find in these places. The Canary are just car like casually carrying all of the artifacts, all of the things that we've been discovering throughout the course of uh, the games. They're like, yeah, we're just studying it. Yo! Look at this Dreadwolf mural too. That's gorgeous stuff. I'm going to need to, like, dedicate an entire, like, Sistine Chapel to just, like, Dragon Age murals. I need to get, like, a building and just make it, like, my place of Dragon Age worship. And everyone's welcome to come and hang out and worship Dragon Age. <laughs> it didn't work. Oh, yeah, well, it's not connected onto the wall, so... It didn't work. Hmm. Okay. There's something to do here with our veil fire. There's one downstairs. We'll figure it out. Scrap of writing from a Ben Hasrath agent. Excavated mural. Believed to be a self-portrait. He did it for himself. It's so funny because he's the artist, right? So he's the one who does all the murals in Skyhold. I just, I think I fucking love the concept that he did this for himself. That's his name, Pride. He's like, yes, I take pride in who I am. Mm, yes, I look beautiful. Mm, I am a wolf. Bro is like a literal Dragon Age fairy and he is unashamed. He's like, yes, inside of you there is a wolf and it is filled with dread. It's also me. One sees the hunter, one flees from it, one hunts it in turn, one outwits them all. Okay. One sees the hunter, one flees from it, one hunts it in turn, one outwits them all. So the Hala would be the one to flee from the hunter. The wolf might be the one to hunt it in turn, or maybe the wolf is the one that sees the hunter. Or maybe the wolf is the one that outwits them all, because that's kind of what he did. The wolf could kind of fit into all of them. There's also a fucking Nug. Oh, interesting. So this is synchronizing the collectibles again, but in this place. It's so strange. I guess I'll do it. Um, ah! Collectibles successfully synchronized. Maybe this is like, I didn't realize that this might just be a point of no return. That's why the golden nug is here. Okay. All right. So we need to figure out the veil fire. There's one here, one on the floor, one on the ground floor. Um, and there may be a fourth one, I suppose. So the one that's here is staying lit. Oh no, it's not staying lit. Oh, this is the one that would see the hunter because it's the bird. So sees the hunter. Then the one that would flee from it is uh, the Hala. So we'll go up and do the Hala one now. And then what is this? This is a dragon. So it'll be this one next. Yes. Okay, correct. Um, so one sees it, the bird, one flees from it, the Hala, one hunts it in turn, which would be the dragon, and then one outwits them all, which would be the wolf, and that will be downstairs. Yep, because now the wolf has been activated, because I can hear it. There it is. Perfect. Bloody bargain. Bloody bargain. Oh, that reminds me. There was the very first one that we did of this. I forgot to loot the statue because 
I didn't realize that they were lootable statues at the time. I thought it was just solving the puzzle to proceed. So there's one item we haven't picked up yet. Um, so we might go back for that. If we can go back. The Coterie of Kirkwall was run for many years by a man named Harlan. Rumors said he was an apostate, an abomination, a demon of rage, poorly impersonating a man, or that there was no Harlan at all, that it was a title passed to whichever Coterie member was the most bloodthirsty on any given day. During his time at the head of the Undercity, Harlan was suspected of killing at least 200 people. For years, the city guard hunted him to bring him to the gallows, but ultimately he was killed by one of his own lieutenants, stabbed with his own knife. Yo, um, Cole can have this one because this is a decent upgrade. Um, we'll get rid of Walking Death, I suppose. Just upgrade for a straight DPS increase. There you go, mate. Now they're matching. Never mind. No, they're not. Our oh, bloody bargain isn't matching. They were matching before? No. What was I looking at? Oh, why did they look the same for a second there? Game lied to me. I thought he had matching ones. All right. Um, what we're going to do is we're quickly going to see if we can run on back. Because uh, I did forget this lore uh, and this item to find. Oh, you know what? It's red. It doesn't look like we can go back. Statue is red, so this might be a point of no return. Yeah, we're not going back. Um, oh, yeah. We'll read it later. Um, like we're, I'm aware that I've missed it, so we'll check it out. But it'll be like a weapon or a something. That's okay. We've solved that, so I think that's done now. Isn't this just so wonderful and magical? Now we have to solve the puzzle related to the door, I guess, before we can proceed. So. Is it even a puzzle? Yes. Do the thing to the other thing. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not good with things that don't have feelings. Do the thing to the other thing, okay. One of these will be the right one, I guess. Oh, hang on. Wait. Oh, I see what's going on here. Okay. Oh, that was one too much. Oh god, this is going to be awful. I think that one is just a little bit still on it. Hold on. Okay, now I need to get this one properly off. Now I can do this one. Just have to do it again, and then should open. Up you go. It's open. Let's go. Doors. Shokarium. Hello. Oh, running away, eh? Running away, eh? What if I blew up this room? Ah! <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> oh my god. Somebody shouldn't have all this Gatlock lying around. Someone might blow up the whole room. Wouldn't be surprised if my game crashed doing something like that. 
Okay. Written instructions for new workers. I literally went to read that as New Yorkers. <laughs> well, we're bringing in some New Yorkers to the Dragon Age. While some of this letter is written in Kunlat, most of it is in the common tongue. The letter's blocky and simple, but tidy. The Dragon's Breath must continue, regardless of concerns at the Winter Palace. Many are new to the queue and have not yet learned to trust. Your worry is understandable. The rest of the world has betrayed you. All who have been to the Davarad know the difficulty of maintaining the specimen for extraction for as long as we have. If we delayed Dragon's Breath, we would have have to dispose of the specimen. Creating Gatlock is normally a slow process requiring much mining and careful alchemy. Venom extraction offers the only means to deliver the dragon's breath quickly and in large quantities. To delay dragon's breath is to lose any chance of bringing peace to the south without needless suffering. The Kuhn demands we save the workers of the south from a bloody war and deliver them into our teaching before corruption further overtakes the land. Others have voiced concern over the specimen. The Kuhn does not demand cruelty to any living being, but all creatures have a place and a duty under the Kuhn. The specimen serves as it must. When Dragon's Breath is complete, it will be extinguished quickly and painlessly, as when we slaughter animals for food. Allow your superiors to deal with the agents of Fenharel, and remember your role in service to the Kuhn. The Canari are determining that the South must be, like almost entirely like reset in a leadership sense, take out the leadership to prevent bloody wars from happening by killing many people and then convert them all into the queue. And because we're so nice, we're so nice to you and we give you cuddles. We'll give you queue and cuddles, get into our team. The, the dragon's breath is tied to a living being. The secrets of the Gatlock is, is, tied to venom extraction. This is a, a living being that goes into creating Gatlock. This is why Gatlock's been, uh, like, Canari, like, what is it, the black powder? Has been, like, such a mystery as well, because they have their, their own little unique little methods of creating the stuff. Maintaining the specimen for as long as we have. Like it would, I don't know. Like it's referred to as dragon's breath. So you want to go, is it a dragon, right? Is it an, is it an arch demon dragon? Have they, have the Kuhn managed to, find and restrict an actual arch demon and they're just chilling with one is it a titan that they have like it's there's so many questions general notes found in the barracks there are several entries in this journal some in kunlat and some in common as if the writer was practicing their language skills the last page reads sent to palace again moving things along bus shems never notice who comes or goes when the dragon's breath comes they won't know one hit them I don't even know what's going to hit me, and I'm here. I'm like, every single, every single law note is so important too, because we're reading all of them, and it just gives us so much. And I think this, I oh know, we need to be downstairs. Cool. Amulet of Physical Immunity. Suffers no physical effects in combat? Hello? Sure. When wearer of this belt was attacked, some damage is reflected back onto enemies. Um, yes. Yes. Actually, you know what? That, prob that belt probably works better on another character, which is hilarious because now that I've taken it off uh, I've just lost my potions probably but I think that would be better on the bull considering he's got attack speed when below 50% health but we'll do that because he suffers a lot of damage it's gonna be better on him oh cool I still have my potions we're good we're good
Oh, we got a crafting station here as well. It's so it's so interesting. So because we can't go back anymore, this is definitely the final area. That's why there's a golden nug here. That's why there's like the ability to craft stuff. It's the veil. It wants to be back, but it's trapped on you. I don't know how to help. The veil wants to be back, but it's trapped on you. Hello, Dragon Skull. Dragon Beth, uh, Breath Plan. This document appears to be written entirely in Kunlat, but contains a number of complicated diagrams, including detailed blueprints of Halam Sharal and a number of other palaces and fortresses. Look at all this. The Canari text is gibberish, but it looks a great deal like they're cataloging artifacts. How many ruins must they have found to produce so much? What are they doing with it? Morrigan said the key to an alluvian could be anything including knowledge or power. So they're stockpiling both. That's how they got the keystone and opened so many of the Alluvians we've seen. Hopefully they don't have any more ancient magic crap to throw at us. That dragon skull would make a wicked armchair though. Maybe we could take it back to Skyhold after this. Classic response. They've got one of the elven thingies as well. Bull has great priorities, as always. Letters and replies. A letter with an Inquisition seal sits half buried in a pile of memos. To the Honorable Salisari, Triumvirate of the Kuhn, on behalf of the Inquisition, I must humbly inquire as to the hostile actions of your agents in Halam Sharal. We can only view the attacks by Ben Hasrath agents upon our officers and the infiltration and sabotage of the Exalted Council at Halam Sharal as the prelude to a declaration of war. If the Canari people do not wish to provoke retaliation from the Chantry, these hostilities must cease at once. Respectfully, Amb Ambassador Josephine Montillier. Several incomprehensible messages in Kunlat follow. A letter in common with elegant script has been torn open and crumpled into a bowl, but the writing is still legible. To Ambassador Josephine Montillier, <coughs> so excuse me, of the Inquisition, the triumvirate of the Canari people wishes to assure you that despite the loss of the dreadnought Barethlock and its crew of 100 souls in a failed joint mission with the Inquisition two years past, military action has not been approved against the Inquisition. No one in Par Volan has authorized actions of any kind involving the Exalted Council, nor will they. We are seeking out the Ben Hasroth priest who appears to be leading this operation without our consent. Once she is located, we assure you that these hostile actions will cease. Is there a rogue element to the Kuhn? Because that feels wrong. Because they operate as like a larger whole. They have all of their different pieces. They're an extension of a body. Or are they being like, uh -huh, yeah, it's not us. Are they... Are they trying to play innocent they're like uh, yeah it's definitely definitely not us or are they being serious i can't tell that's the thing that's the thing they're like oh yeah we deny or oh, as a training exercise we found a magic mirror and we started uh training with it um you're fine we promise you know I don't know how I feel about it. We haven't had the opportunity to have a rogue unlock a door for a while, or even a warrior knock down a thing, or anything. Um, anyone need healing? Before we start? Nope. More dragon skulls. It is a dragon. Okay, they've got a dragon for dragon's breath. There you go. I mean, it makes the most sense. 
Dragon's Breath is... an actual dragon? Tetha! Bars! Sir. Inquisition! Nira Tasi Asara! Miravas Adim Kata! Big boy! Israel, now, please! The net katas! Not a chance, ma'am. <laughs> Dude, okay. They've actually got a dragon. And this whole this whole time, you know when we had that the DLC armor that was the Canary themed one this whole time it's like these uh the armor that these characters are wearing very interesting I had no idea until now Die! Goddamn magical shield. Oh. Look at that canary shock trooper. Man. Better Kadan. The music in the original game was good, like especially that main theme, but holy shit, like the DLC music has just been some of the best ever. This is so good. Oops, sorry, Cole. Just blew him up. I always laugh when I accidentally blow up my companions. It's all in good fun, guys. Okay, we I think we maybe we gotta fight a dragon. Bull did say he really wanted a dragon. <laughs> the first half of this logbook appears to be notes on the care and feeding of animals in a free marcher lord's manner. After that, it shifts into practice phrases in Kunlat. Later, it begins again with the following. Beast presents chafing around limbs and tail, likely from attempts to use chains. While its natural strength remains, muscles are slack from confinement. Tardathra said she initially tried drugging the beast, but the amount required to keep it sedated changed the quality of its venom so that it was no longer useful in producing Gatlock. She says fire has kept it under control, while the heated panels keep it in a state of comfortable drowsiness. Tardathras is not as good at deception as she thinks she is. She does not like what we are doing to the beast. She calls it Atashi, which means something like great thing. And she repeats sayings from the Kuhn to herself when she extracts the venom. I do not disagree with her. I saw enough harm done to innocent beasts at my lord's sneering commands. The beast, the Atashi, deserves better than the pry bars and needles we use upon it each time we drain its venom gland. Tadathra says I may be needed at the Winter Palace. It is likely that some view the elves with suspicion thanks to these attacks by the agent of Fenharel, but a human woman may still pass unnoticed among the servants. She says I may be asked to deliver more Gatlock in different containers. She says that it could be dangerous, and that if I do not return, most will assume I am dead. As I said, Tadathra is not as good at deception as she thinks she is, but she is right. I did not join the Kuhn for this. Wow. Like... It's like this really interesting thing for them where like they they really they don't want to harm this creature and they treasure it and all like creatures have their place you know uh sort of thing but then there's sort of this overriding necessity that they feel is like determined by the kune um to have this power or resource that i guess supersedes their their morals i suppose 
It's it's a lot to to process too. Orders posted in the factory. Portions of this are in indecipherable Kunlat with what might be formulas in an unfamiliar number system. One section has been translated for Vidathari workers in the factory, then circled, repeatedly underlined with arrows drawn around it by someone who was clearly very insistent that it be read. For primers, combine no more than one part Atashi venom with an equal amount of deathroot auxin and three parts powdered silverite. Adding more venom will dissolve the casing on the primers here in the factory and fill the room with deadly gas. Whoever keeps getting the formula wrong needs to see me immediately. We have a great many primers to make on a tight schedule and cannot afford any more delays due to mistakes. We're getting recipes for the stuff. Just wondering if blowing these up will reveal things or or not. Like we can detonate the one up there, but I don't know if it does anything or whether they're just for show. They've got a shitload of it down there though. We have to free it. Oh, Atashi. We will not let you cut down the Atashi. We have to free it. So, boss, are we gonna fight the dragon or what? She's scared. She doesn't want to be here. Oh. They hurt her. Okay, hang on. We gotta figure out how to free this dragon. There's a bunch of panels. I'm trying to free you! Um, okay. I need to, like, spin around these valves. Interesting that it won't attack the canary. Okay. I don't want them getting in there into battle. So the flame vents are supposed to like, what did it say? It was like sedating it or something. Not sedating it or like keeping it calm. I want you guys to disengage. Actually, we know what might be a good idea. What I'll get them to do is I'll be like, come back here. That's, is, it, is this come back to me, this one? They're not gonna come back to me, are they? <laughs> okay, I got stuff in the way. Okay, so I can keep moving it. I just don't know where I have to move it, but... Barriers are set. Now we just need to open the gate. Oh! Oh, I was... I did the right thing. Okay. Now we just need to open the gate. Oh, because then the fires point away from the gate. Yes! We're helping her! Yep, keep dying, guys. You're doing great. That's it! There goes our dragon! Yay! Um, that was so smooth and not even a struggle. <laughs> There's an Alluvian in the background, too. <laughs> yeah, look at this 
big boy. Holy shit, he's so huge. Ashara. It is a big Sarabas. It's massive. Dear Inquisitor, you have such a little time left. You must finally see the truth. Elven magic already tore the sky apart. If the agents of Ben Harrell are not stopped, you will shatter the world as well. Whatever you think I've done, mass assassination isn't a good moral high ground. The South was poisoned by these elves' manipulations. It suffers just as you do now. You would have died from the mark on your hand, but for the help of one of their chief agents. The same agent who helped seal the breach, who led you to Skyhold, who gave Corypheus the orb, then founded the Inquisition. Soulless, agent of Fen'Harel. Sorry, guys. I have insider information. He is the Dreadwolf. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, so last episode we were like, oh, duh, it's finally clicked for me this whole time they're talking about an agent of Fenrir, and I'm like, oh, okay. It's okay, it's Solus, because they don't know that he's the Dreadwolf. That bastard used me. <laughs> oh man. I'm not Solus's puppet. I'm his ex boyfriend. I mean, girlfriend. I'm a girl. <laughs> Solus is an agent of Fen Harrell. Did you not know? We thought you were his ally. Solus tricked us all. He pushed a dying canary into the Winter Palace to lure you into opposing us. Oh. Without him, we could have brought the South peace and wisdom along the gentle path. Now we must take the way of blades. Panahaden, Inquisitor. If it is any consolation, Solus will not outlive you. Holy shit! Solus... Solus helped us by making us aware of the situation by dropping that canary out of the Alluvian. He's like, this will give them a heads up. This will give them uh, a warning. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm killing him myself. Wow. They really give you the option to like, if you're truly one of the people that just hate his character, like if you never even liked him in the first place, <laughs> there you go. That's why Solus left. He's been helping us fight the Kunari all this time. We have to save him. Gotta save my boy. Dorian and Iron Bull do not like that. <laughs> Damn, we went straight into the mirror too. Not even a chance to look around. It continues. This is very overwhelming. Everybody hold on to your butts. Come on, the Vidasala can't be too far ahead. What are you doing? Okay. He's a, he grew legs. Um, get to Solus before the Vidasala. Oh, we're at Elven Ruins. I need, I need a fucking break. All right, um, the creatures, I was hoping for the Dragon Codex entry. Maybe you have to kill it to get the entry, which is quite sad. Um, Jesus. Okay, so they think that Solus is an agent of Fen Harel. Obviously, our character is completely clueless of what's going on here. But, God, this is uh, this is amazing. So the Kanari would have been able to completely go unnoticed if it wasn't for Solus pushing a Kanari out of an Alluvian for us to to see it happen. So he's been, I guess, trying to stop it or or something. Uh, I need. I need just a quick break, so we're just going to take a breather and then we will proceed because this is just a lot <laughs> to process. <laughs> okay, ready to get back into it. Get to Solus before the Vidasala. 
And we are we are at some elven uh, we're at some elven ruins. I wonder if this is where Solus uh, met with Mathal. If this I'm is back. that place or not, where he either took her powers from her or she rel relinquished them to him. Oh my god, I'm actually exploding now. I'm actually blowing up. The anchor now builds up power even faster. Using it is difficult, but dis discharges all accumulated focus. If the focus reaches full power, the anchor discharges uncontrollably, damaging you and your allies as well as nearby enemies. Holy crap. That can't be healthy. Perhaps Solas can help. Solas doesn't want to hurt people. He isn't that kind of wolf. The canary don't see. Cole just actually outed him. Like, for, as, as far as we're concerned for the characters in the game, they still think he's an agent of Fenrir now. Uh, thank you. I need that. Um, so, yeah, really curious if... Um, really curious about the... Um, the location, whether we're in that spot with Mithal and then you know it's, it's hard to really see what's going on in an unspoken scene like you know Fenrir's apologizing and Mithal's like I know and you're my friend and they have this like em like friendly em embrace of like you know that reunion of we can reveal who we are to one another you know after Solus has been hiding for so long and then he either takes the power from her she relinquishes it to him and then she's like like a stone now, but she was also playing around with an alluvian before, and it's hard to know what she was actually doing, whether she was preparing for something. Like, she's put herself in a goddamn necklace before, so, you know, she could still be around, maybe, or maybe Solus has just taken her all in, and he's got Mithal, Flemeth, and the old god Sol all together. Who knows? But whether that was done as an understanding friendship or not, We'll see. Look at my fucking focus bar. I'm gonna blow up. Over there. That's got to be where Solus is. Wow. Guys, get away from me. I'm gonna blow up. Hold position. <laughs> oh my god. Holy shit. I'm getting like pulled into the sky by it. That's nuts. Genuinely crazy. This place absolutely gorgeous. I'm gonna have to do a lot of hold position, guys. He can't be far from her, or it hurts him. Oh, is he talking about how the Sarabas can't be far from her? Boom. So I'm no longer invulnerable when using the thing, I don't think. Uh, these enemies are hitting very hard. They're the same level, but they're hitting a lot harder than they were before. Like, people are getting hit in one shot and getting weak. I'm gonna blow myself up. Ah! 
Jesus. Oh, what the f well, look! Got hit so hard he's phasing out of reality! <laughs> oh my god. There's not a lot of stuff around here to discover in terms of lore so far, so I wonder if it's just going to be more of like a straight shot. Hold on, hold on guys, I'm gonna, like, you need this, and I'm gonna blow myself up again. <sighs> Don't mind me guys, just absolutely blowing this place to smithereens with my power. Solus, please remove the anchor from my hand, or I'm going to explode. Times. Oh, this is Sarath. This is the one that wrote the note. Oh god, this is the one that was t in that codex entry for uh, for Talus. Holy shit! Oh yeah, my focus bar. Because okay, I was about to use my focus attack, but then I forgot that I keep blowing up and losing all of my focus. Oh my god. Oh, everything's really slow in here.
Okay, so it do only does damage to my teammates if it goes off, uh, like, uncontrollably. It's good to know. What are you doing, man? Oh. Oh. It's that thing that he does when he dies. Okay. I was like, why isn't he healing? Oh, he's quite literally dead. Oh. Good. oh, no, he just moved. Blew myself up for nothing. It seems the Cerebas is no longer following orders. Holy shit. You will not leave here, Inquisitor. Antam, Ibrashok Adib. It has broken its own chains. Okay. You are blowing yourselves up. I need an enemy to explode quickly. Never mind. Leading the charge of my own over here. Hanging out near a bunch of Gatlock. Quick, we're almost there. <sighs> I don't know my own strength. Actually, yes, I do. I lied. I am Knight Enchanter Lavellan, and you will be exploded. And there's multiple Alluvians here. Can we get up to this one? Yes, we can. Oh, multiple alluvians. And we can enter them. Okay, interesting. Um, I'll make a save. And we'll go exploring. This might give us some cool stuff. One of the damned mirrors has to lead out of here. Oh. 
No! I got so excited. It's a it's just a, literally a puzzle. Okay. Well, I'm assuming it's the centerpiece mirror. I thought we were gonna be taken to maybe some cool bonus rooms for like lore or something. Damn. Oh, when you use the mirrors, they um they close. Interesting. It's a little lame. But it is what it is. Alright. Maravaskatara! <laughs> You big man. Dead, Your soul is dust. This is a boss arena for sure. Yep. I know how video games work. Fight Sarath. Okay, here we go. Is he gonna blow up? Yep. music. I, I'm sick and tired of him slowing me down though. No one slows the Inquisitor! I just moved! We've got demons, okay. Don't jump this time. These moves are so cool. Canary spirits that like come down the purple ones. It's so cool. This is so crazy. And this music too.
but the fade cap. Use your mark. To wait for my focus bar to come back because I used the wrong attack. I can use it now. We can touch the sky. Use your mark. <sighs> that was so cool. It changed Cole's hair color forever. <laughs> he was like had green hair and then he had brown hair. Oh my god. What a fight. I knew he was a big Sarabas the whole time. It was so cool to actually fight the guy in such an epic fashion too. What an insane moveset. So exciting. <laughs> oh my god. All right. Um, is everyone alive? Are we all okay? Jesus Christ. All right, I think we need to exit through the Illuvian. Just me on my own? <gasps> Holy shit. Just like we saw before at the ancient elven ruins. Petrified. Is that a giant alluvian right at the back there? That's huge. Ebersit kata etwa ost. Maras kata. Oh, this have failed. Leave now and tell the canari to trouble me no further. Oh. Solus. should give us more time. I suspect you have questions. Oh, his voice is so different. Oh, you can just drop it immediately. Oh, this music. Oh, I love that we can just drop it right on him immediately. He's looking fly too. This is an outfit. The Kunari answered some of those questions. The information I found while traveling through the Illuvians answered more. You're Fenharel. You're the Dreadwolf. Well done. I was Solus first. Fenharel came later. An insult I took as a badge of pride. The Dreadwolf inspired hope in my friends and fear in my enemies. Not unlike Inquisitor, I suppose. And now you know. What is the old Dalish curse? May the dread wolf take you. Wow. Oh, the heartbreak. Oh, I want to pick all of the options. Oh. This is a, okay, what do I pick? I'm, this, I'm curious about this. Are you a fragment of what Fenharel once was? Like Mithal? No, this is all I have ever been. And the legends? I sought to set my people free from slavery to would-be gods. I broke the chains of all who wished to join me. The false gods called me Fenharel. And when they finally went too far, I formed the veil and banished them forever. Thus I freed the elven people. And in so doing, 
destroyed their world. Destroyed Arlathan, I suppose, right? That's how the fall of Arlathan came to be. Uh, how did creating the veil destroy the world? You saw the remains of Viadathara. The library was intrinsically tied to the Fade, and the Veil destroyed it. There were countless other marvels, all dependent on the presence of the Fade, all destroyed. Your legends are half right. We were immortal. It was not the arrival of humans that caused us to begin aging. It was me. The Veil took everything from the elves, even themselves. Dude. The quickening is just a, another after effect of the veil. Oh my God. Like he had to, he like felt that he had to do this to free his people, but he's, he's condemned his people to this. It's, that's like one of the biggest, most monumental changes to a whole entire world structure. Like, oh, the you can see the intent and what he was meaning to do, but look at all the pain and suffering it has caused. You love the Fade. Why would you create the Veil to hide it all away? Because every alternative was worse. Meaning? Had I not created the Veil, the Evanuras would have destroyed the entire world. The Evanuras were elven mages. How did they come to be remembered as gods? Slowly. It started with a war. War breeds fear. Fear breeds a desire for simplicity. Good and evil, right and wrong, chains of command. After the war ended, generals became respected elders, then kings, and finally gods. The Evanuras. You banished the false gods. You didn't kill them. You met Methol, did you not? The first of my people do not die so easily. The Evanuris are banished forever, paying the ultimate price for their misdeeds. I think the fall of Arl Arlathan was a Tevinter related thing, right? Not this, not relation to the Veil. This was still, that was like before that. I think it was Arlathan and, and Tevinter, and then the arrival of the humans have sort of coincidentally in the tales been like, this is where around the time elves started to age and humans were blamed. Like we are a sickness, a cancer, but it was an elven issue and it was an elven uh, situation. Oh, this is unbelievable. Every alternative was worse. You said that the elven gods went too far. What did they do that made you move against them? They killed Mithor. <laughs> Crying for which an eternity of torment is the only fitting punishment. I thought Mithal was one of the Evanuris. She was the best of them. She cared for her people. She protected them. She was a voice of reason. And in their lust for power, they killed her. Fuck. So, yeah, Mithal was betrayed and killed by the Evanuris. Solus, being her friend, was like, this has gone too far, leading his, like, f slave rebellion. And then creating the veil. I, w I, have, I wish there were, like, 6,000 more questions. I just want to sit and talk through all of the history, because he knows it all. Tell me. That's the past. What about the future? I lay in dark and dreaming sleep while countless wars and ages passed. I woke still weak a year before I joined you. My people fell for what I did to strike the Evanuris down. But still, some hope remains for restoration. I will save the Elven people, even if it means this world must die. 
Whoa. Oh, man. Holy shit. Because the, oh, this world exists on so many... Like I was saying, with like going into the veil, this world is propped up with all of these, like these these stories and and beliefs and uh, like everything about the veil and what we know with like the fade and demons and spirits and like everyone's place in the world all spanned from this event of the veil and if the veil is to be lifted if the fade and the physical world are be to become as one again you can't just put it back together I fucking adore this. Like, I, I've, I love this so much that they have had this uh, this companion with you throughout the game to fight by your side and to be such a uh, significant and valuable uh, addition to this story, to the cast of characters, such a valuable resource for information and lore on this world, and a beautiful kind of romance here going on between our characters as well that is quite tragic and heartbreaking in, like, the the fur, the fact that we've got like this this Dalish elf clinging onto her her beliefs and her upbringing and all of the stories and she's faced with this ancient elf that just is like no it's not like that at all and everything you believe is a lie and it's like and we're just getting so many of those same things for everything it's like no this was actually like this and this this guy was actually an elf mage by the way and like there are titans down there by the way and it's just all of these significant things and they're setting up this this character to be the villain of the next one dragon age dreadwolf because he has a goal of to set to save the elven people at the cost of what currently is and that's so compelling and that's it's so amazing because you, we have this whole game, right? This whole game, we have Corypheus. And he's like, ah, evil orb. And he just, he only gets one win. Maybe two. But he, for the most part, gets one win. And that's at Haven. Uh, and then the rest of it, he's like a child, not getting what he wants. Um, and then you fight him and you kill him. Uh, and it's sort of like this I idea that it's like, I think this was mentioned in the game at some point. It's something about like your enemies being a lot, uh, something about an enemy being close to you or like alongside you, not the one in front of you. Like you've got this loser <laughs> as, a, as a villain desperately trying to reach, uh, you know, the golden city, the black city as it is now, and trying to physically enter the fade. Meanwhile, we've got the, the real villain by our side, waiting for his turn. This music accompanying this scene, because this is so hard. As an elven inquisitor that was uh, associated with Solus, intimately associated with Solus, um, there's a point of relation there. Like, I see where he's coming from. I see what he's saying, how he feels about this. But so much has changed in his absence. He's only been awake for a year since he went to sleep. There has been so much history, so much that has, has happened. And it's it's something to really wrestle with is that thought and idea that like the veil was never supposed to be. The veil was something, was a desperate measure. And this is the result of it. And it's unsustainable, clearly. Like, we know that. We, because of every fucking five years, there's a world ending event going on. Um, it's amazing that it's even gone on this long and uh, the world hasn't imploded. But with that in mind, on the other side of the coin, the world has persevered for this long with the veil uh, established. Is it possible to save the elven people and keep the veil up? You know, there's there's so much to really think about here. It's it's tough. It's like there's part of me that wants to say this, but I don't at the same time. I empathize. I sympathize with his goal. But why is that necessary? 
why does this world have to die for the elves to return? A good question, but not one I will answer. You have always shown a thoughtfulness I respected. It would be too easy to tell you too much. I am not Corypheus. I take no joy in this. But the return of my people means the end of yours. It is my fight. You should be more concerned about the Inquisition. Your Inquisition. In stopping the Dragon's Breath, you have prevented an invasion by Canari forces. With luck, they will return their focus to Devinter. That should give you a few years of relative peace. Your Inquisition. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Does it mean like the end of everything? Like the, the, the city and the Dalish elves too? They have to go? As, as well as humans and, and dwarves? Like it all has to... Is he good, wants to press the big bad reset button? Oh, this is what I was... And this is what we were talking about. Where I was saying... Like, it really feels like with what's being established in this game, what's happening right now, the revelations we're experiencing, like, really feels like it's building towards, like, a finality. Either of the series itself or this particular version of Thetis as we know it, it's coming to a close. The curtain call. The Kunari said the Inquisition was unknowingly working for agents of Fen'Harel. I gave no orders. You led us to Skyhold. Corypheus should have died unlocking my orb. When he survived, my plans were thrown into chaos. When you survived, I saw the Inquisition as the best hope this world had of stopping him. And you needed a home. Hence, Skyhold. Uh, thanks, I guess. You gave your orb to Corypheus. Not directly. My agents allowed the Venatori to locate it. Uh. The orb had built up magical energy while I lay unconscious for millennia. I was not powerful enough to open it. The plan was for Corypheus to unlock it, and for the resulting explosion to kill him. Then I would claim the orb. I did not foresee a Devinter Magister having learned the secret of effective immortality. Mm. So he was, yeah, he was expecting... Corypheus to just die. What would have happened if Corypheus had died and you'd recovered the orb? I would have entered the Fade using the mark you now bear. Then I would have torn down the veil. As this world burned in the raw chaos, I would have restored the world of my time. The world of the elves. If you destroyed the veil, wouldn't the false gods be freed? I had plans. So, at least some of the stories about the Dreadwolf are true. I did not lead a rebellion against immortal mage kings without getting my hands bloody. You must understand. I awoke in a world where the veil had blocked most people's conscious connection to the Fade. It was like walking through a world of tranquil. We aren't even people to you. Not at first. You showed me that I was wrong. Again. That does not make what must come next any easier. <laughs> Ouch. Wow. Solus wakes up and it, it's like walking through a world of tranquil and doesn't even see them as, as people, like worthy of living. Like just, this is the perspective of a god as much as he doesn't proclaim himself to be one. He is an all-powerful ancient elf. And he wishes to restore the world of all-powerful ancient elves. But to make it better, I guess. But also at the cost of everything that has been established over thousands of years. And Mithal was alive. I, I, I want to know... I want to ask the questions about Mithal here, but he's saying it's too easy to tell us anything. Oh. It's one of those situations where it's like, you don't want to be mad at him, but yes, you do. And it's like, it's, it's very conflicting. And that is a good, that is a good character. That is a great character to have. 
We showed him that he was wrong, which is great. I like that. We're like, we are we are bigger than you think. We are not ants under your boot, Solus. You never cared about us. We were the means to an end. You were people, and you deserved better. Like all the rest I've used in one hopeless battle after another. Oh. Why? Did, oh. I don't think the camera angle is supposed to be like this. This is very weird. It's just ruined all the emotional lighting. Because um, this is why he said at the orb time, he was like, no matter what comes next, what hap what that we had was real. I mean, it better be real, the way he grabbed my butt. What's wrong with the Inquisition? You created a powerful organization, and now it suffers the inevitable fate of such. Betrayal and corruption. It's not that simple. Do you know how I discovered the Canari plot? The plot I disrupted by leading them to your doorstep. The Canari spies in the Inquisition tripped over my spies in the Inquisition. The Elven Guard who led you to the Canari body? Who intercepted the servant with the Gatlock barrel? Mine. God damn. Like... So it wasn't just Solus t tripping a Canari through an Alluvian to tip us off. He also had his own agents within our own Inquisition. The Inquisition is corrupted, guys. Like, it's got Canari spies. It's got Solus's spies. Who else is in our Inquisition? Because we'd just be picking people up for the greater cause. We're like, yeah, you look like you've got a good chip on your shoulder. Get in here. And that's anyone and everyone fighting for a greater good until someone else's big old plans in the background are like, okay, uh, time to be my spy. Why bother disrupting the Kunari plot if you're going to destroy the world regardless? You have shown me that there is value in this world, Inquisitor. I take no joy in what I must do. Until that day comes, I would see those recovering from the breach free of the Kuhn. Why? Because I am not a monster. If they must die, I would rather they die in comfort. In any event, it is done. Wow. The, the fact that there is like a, a genuine confliction and a remorse for what he has to do, like he has that conviction. Um, please stop glitching everywhere, Solus, you all-powerful elf boy. Um, it's fascinating. It's it's so it's so well done, and it's so frustrating. <laughs> Fucking hell! The the elven lore is so good, is it not? Thanks. So you let us do your dirty work. The mistake was yours to fix, Inquisitor. You control the Illuvians now. Yes. You remember Briala from Halam Shiram? For a time, she controlled part of the labyrinth. One of my agents was supposed to take it from her, but he did not succeed. I had to override the magic personally. The Canari stumbled upon this section independently. With them gone, the Illuvians are now mine. Solus has complete control over the crossroads. I wonder what Morrigan has to say about this. These, these are the things that get put into question. Did Solus take all of Mathal into himself or only part of something? Because is Morrigan now bound to Solus by drinking from the well? If we drank from the well, would we now be bound to Solus through some sort of Mathal proxy? There's still the matter of the anchor. It's getting worse. I know, Venan. Oh. And we are running out of time. <laughs> You're gonna call me that now, huh? He knew this was gonna happen. The mark will eventually kill you. Drawing you here gave me the chance to save you. At least for now. Oh my god. Whoa. The Inquisition will try to convince Solus to change his plan. The Inquisition will stop Solus, even if it means killing him.
he knew that this magic was going to tear me apart the whole time. I wish it could, for none. <gasps> My love. I will never forget you. Unleash that energy and you anchor to bitch slap his face. Oh my god. Bruce started calling me his love again and kissed me and left me to die. What now? Something must be done, but we cannot lose the Inquisition now. We stand on the brink of war with the Canari. Yes, because this- I'm stuck on a black loading screen! First place. The Inquisition did not cause this threat. Okay. We informed the summit of the danger. The Freaked danger out. Posed by Konari spies inside your organization. Thought I was stuck on a black screen. Our organization, none of us would be here to complain. No one has forgotten what you have done. But Corypheus is two years dead. If the Inquisition is to continue, it must do so as a legitimate organization, not a glorified mercenary band. Inquisitor. Oh, my arm. Oh, my God. I lost a fucking arm. Holy shit. Oh, my God, there's so many choices. Excuse me, can I just process the fact that I lost my arm and didn't die? I thought I was just about to die. Like, he just... He's like, my love, let's have one final kiss. See you later. I'm in control of all the Alluvians and I'm going to reset the world big time. Dude, I... Fuck! <laughs> ah! We serve the Divine, not you. The Inquisition will serve Divine Victoria. Efforts against Solus will be stronger, but risk corruption. Holy shit. This entire sequence is just making the choices about how you're going to oppose the dread wolf the inquisition will be disbanded efforts against solace will be weaker but more secure the inquisition will serve divine victoria efforts against solace will be stronger but risk corruption oh it's just the same i thought we had so many choices we it's the same choice but with different emotions so you either get you either have like a tough neutral or emotional disbanding or serving divine victoria this is absolute insanity oh i loved that scene so much but oh they you know that they've really done it well when you are sympathizing so hard but you can see that like it it has to there must be another way you know i feel so like helpless to like change his mind but you want to but also he's a goddamn elven boomer and he's like back in my day we used to be immortal and we're gonna do that The Inquisition will be disbanded. Efforts against Solus will be weaker, but more secure. You all know what this is? A writ. From Divine Justinia authorizing the formation of the Inquisition. We pledge to close the breach, find those responsible, and restore order, with or without anyone's approval. It wasn't a formally authorized treaty that saved Ferelden's people. It wasn't careful diplomacy that ended your inane civil war. It was never about the organization. It was about people doing what was necessary. Now, if you'll excuse me, 
I have a world to save. Again. <laughs> Effective immediately. The Inquisition is disbanded. Lavellan walking out with a with not a mic drop but a tome drop. Boop. Another smutty romance novel. Here, yeah, I wrote the next book for you, Cass. Look at my team! Look at my team! <laughs> Dorian and Ball are gonna go celebrate. In short order, the Inquisition was disbanded. Some were relieved to see the unpredictable organization dismantled. There's supposed to be a voice here. Others preferred to remember the Inquisition's good works and the many lives it had saved. It feels like this... Those who had served returned to their former lives, knowing they had stopped a great evil from destroying the world. Someone's supposed to be saying this? Or is it, is it me? <laughs> and hoping that the peace for which they had fought remained, once the Inquisition was gone. With the dragon's breath disrupted and any hope of a swift victory dashed, the Canari retreated back to the north. Few knew what debates were waged in Parvolan, but not long after the Exalted Council, the Canari launched new attacks against Tevinta. Their aggression caught the already unstable Imperium off guard. Tevinter was soon mired in a war many feared could spread across Thedas. Cassandra continued her reign as Divine Victoria, working to ensure that the Inquisition's disbanding did not allow new enemies to rise. Her efforts were successful, and for a time, Southern Thedas saw peace. Cassandra also spent time in the Hunterhorn Mountains north of Orlais, where she worked to rebuild the Seekers. On her off days when she's not the Divine, she get into work. For a time, the new Seekers remained reclusive, showing no interest in worldly affairs and working to a purpose few outside their order could guess. Some believed that the end of the Inquisition, as it had been heralded the destruction of the fledgling College of Enchanters. Having clashed with the Circle, the College now found itself without support against the newly elected Grand Enchanter, Vivian. Fortunately, Grand Enchanter Vivian grudgingly agreed not to destroy its terrified leaders as a personal favour to Divine Victoria. I really wonder how this would have gone if uh, Leliana was divine. The two institutions settled into an uneasy coexistence across the South, vying for power. Leliana continued to act as the Inquisition spymaster in its final months as an independent organization.
During this time, she shared many of her responsibilities with her most trusted agents, including Charter, Rector, and Harding. Many believe that Leliana feared what lay on the horizon and was grooming successes in anticipation of the challenges ahead. Sarah left the Inquisition with scarcely more ties than when she began, disappearing back into her confusing weave of favours and friends. After seeing the world brought to the brink by arrogance and pride, it was a blessing to return to normal, however strange a normal it might be. With frequent visits to her whittle, of course. Ah, it's so cute! The Sarah and Dagna romance! That's adorable. I love that. Perhaps most unnerving was Sarah's standing offer to the Divine. <laughs> when the knobs piss about with your left hand or right, call on Red Jenny to give them two fingers. <laughs> Varric returned to Kirkwall where, as Viscount, he resumed his work rebuilding the damaged city infrastructure. He's wearing his crown. Under his rule, the city-state finally resumed its place as the major trade hub of the Free Marches. That's not like Aveline with really short hair or something, is it? He continued to ignore all mail from both the Merchant Guild and the Prince of Starkhaven. <laughs> Why is Sebastian catching strays in the epilogue of Inquisition? <laughs> With the Inquisition disbanded, the Bull's Chargers returned to taking jobs throughout Orlay and Ferelden. Fighting demons and clearing out the remains of Venatory forces, the Iron Bull did his part to restore order to Thedas. There's Krem. Oh, many of the jobs brought the charges close to the Imperium's border, where, from time to time, in a border town villa, long distance relationship. Bill, Bull and a certain Tevinter Magister would spend a few hours together before life pulled them apart again. Very wholesome. After the Inquisition disbanded, Cullen retired from active service. As he should. He deserves his rest. He returned to Ferelden, establishing, establishing a sanctuary for former Templars on land Divine Victoria granted to him. Templar Lyrium Rehab. With his help, many Templars shed their Lyrium addiction, and those whose minds were too far gone spent their last days in comfort. That is really nice. Cullen helping others in the way that we helped him. And he promised that should his friends from the old Inquisition ever need him, his blade would be ready. With his Mabari. Dorian returned to Devinter to take his father's place in the Magisterium. He'll be fighting a war with the Canari now. As rumours flew about the Imperium's infighting, Dorian was spoken of often as a voice of resistance against corruption. Along with Magister Mavaris Talani, he formed a group called the Lucerni to restore and redeem Tevinter, a fight many thought hopeless. That's very exciting. Those fighting by Magister Parvis' side noted that he kept in constant communication with the Inquisitor via a message crystal.
whether for vital information or for moral support, these talks seem to give Dorian the strength to continue his fight. On one occasion, Venatore forces ambush Dorian, who likely would have died if not for a certain Canari. You can see that immediately. Oh, hang on. Had not an unnamed mercenary band led by a Tal of Ashoth warrior crossed to Vinter's border and mounted a dangerous rescue operation. <laughs> yes, an unnamed mercenary band. The mercenaries left a trail of freed slaves and dead Venatori in their wake, enabling Dorian to escape. When asked about the town of Ashoth in question, Magister Parvis declined to comment. Bruh, imagine Dorian's father reacting to this relationship. Tom Rainier was shown mercy when none was deserved and set on a path of redemption. This gift, so compassionately given, needed to be shared. Freed from his obligations to the Inquisition, Rainier traveled Thedas, giving hope to the condemned and the forgotten. I love that. He's become some sort of roaming figure of Thedas to give hope to, to those. In the deepest prisons and pits of Thedas, he found, if not goodness itself, its potential. By showing faith in those who had none, Rainier lifted them up and made them into something better than they were. He becomes sort of like a remorseful nomad figure. I really, really like that. With the Inquisition disbanded, Josephine made her farewells and returned to Antiva and her family. Thanks to the Inquisitor's help, the Montilliers were once again permitted to trade in Orlais. The next few years were a busy time, as many ships with the Montillier crest were built and set sail again from Antiva's harbours. Soon, Ravani pirate captains with an ancient feud against Josephine's ancestors took to the seas, determined to rekindle the rivalry. Apart from Josephine's sister Yvette, Nearly eloping with a dashing pirate prince on one occasion, Lady Montillier took the development in stride. Cole returned to the Fade, saying that there was more pain coming, and he knew where compassion would be most needed. He said this. He was saying this like, when it's done, I will return to the Fade, a spirit. He promised that his friends in the Inquisition would remember him and that where the hurt was greatest, he would help. After the events at the Winter Palace, elves left the Inquisition under mysterious circumstances, as did elven servants across Thedas. Because they all serve a particular force. None could say where they went, but those who believed the Inquisitor's story about Fenharel wondered just how large the Dreadwolf's forces were. And what the ancient elven rebel had planned. Lavellan sometimes came awake from dreams in which her lover watched her sadly from across an endless distance. If they were more than simple dreams, she could not say, for every time she reached for him, he vanished into nothing. God, he's just constantly, like, texting her at 2am, like, hey babe, you up? And then, like, he just doesn't respond. Still she searched and dreamed and waited for a way to change the Dread Wolf's heart. He's walking the Fade and he's dropping into our dreams.
My agents have found nothing. With the Illuvians, he could be anywhere. With the Inquisition officially disbanded, we have no army, no formal alliances. We have what we truly need. Each other. We will need to be careful. Solus knows everything about us. Who we are, how we work, our strengths, and weaknesses. Then we find people he doesn't know. We will save our friend from himself. If we can. Oh, we're going to Tavinta. We got we gotta rely on Dorian's help. That's it. Dragon Age Inquisition has come to a close. We have our sights set on the Tevinta Imperium. This is really fascinating stuff because this is like the first Dragon Age game that has a very specific hook for a sequel. Dragon Age Origins is its own thing. Dragon Age 2 it does end with an ignition of a mage and templar war but it's not necessarily sequel bait as sort of like just giving us a really significant world event that can be handled any way you want for a sequel and they have you know it starts with peace talks and then things going wrong and all of that in inquisition but something to really think about here is this is the the like a really big sequel hook it's really fascinating. Like this is, this game has ended with a goal in mind. To stop Solus, to stop the Dreadwolf from pressing the reset button and restoring the world as it once was in ancient elven times. And you make these choices that are just gonna directly lead right into how that one starts, which I guess makes sense with the title of the game. I really kind of wish that the title wasn't that, like there's so many things that it could have been instead. Um, but holy shit, that's Dragon Age Inquisition and Trespasser completed. That scene with Solus was fantastic. I'm really struggling to wrap my head around my, my true thoughts and feelings. I feel so very conflicted with our relationship with that character, right? And the way that he treats the Inquisitor and the way that he treats everyone else, the way that he sees people, uh, like it, it's not good. <laughs> and obviously we've he said that like, we've shown him that he was wrong again, right? Like he does have that sort of part of him that can recognize wrongs and maybe see a different perspective. But I feel like it's gonna take a lot to maybe what convince him a new book all this shit is weird oh Verk, that is a terrible title what are you even thinking all this shit is weird okay Varric, nice work okay we're gonna have to listen to the sky churned like a rolling sea on a dark and stormy night Centered on a gaping hole that led to the arse end of nowhere. A hole that spit up many things that day. Comets, demons, and a whole lot of trouble. <gasps> it's about the Inquisition. <laughs> We're getting Cassandra reading the book. Okay, so it wasn't smutty romance novel. He wrote about the Inquisition. Amazing. The din of the tavern cut the silence like it owed the carter money. In the middle, in her element, Red Jenny. She looked me up and down, mostly down. Not playing, weirdy, she said, gesturing with and dismissively eating a sandwich. Don't write that. Seriously, piss up a rope. Sarah made the subtext text, which suited me fine. Cassandra putting on voices is fucking hilarious. That is so good. <laughs> I can't talk about my thoughts right now because we have to listen to Cassandra read a book. Swirled into the room like a drop of beautiful poison spreading in a wine glass. She sized me up with a glance. I'm so glad you made it, my dear, she said. I am Madame de Fair, the most terrifying person you shall ever meet.
Oh, what a way to put a smile on your face in the end credits, huh? Liliana enfolded Alphonse in an embrace as warm as a serpent's kiss. I always knew I could count on your support. <laughs> the Count did not feel the bite of her poisoned dart until it was too late. Even if it requires your death. Her doing the voices of every character is so funny. I can't even process my emotions from the solar scenes because this is so good. Drops of rain glistened on the griffin medallion grasped tightly in Blackwall's hand. And the silver eyes wings of valor, they mean nothing. He flung the medal to the cold and uncaring ground. You don't know what I've done. You don't know me. <sighs> so romantic. <laughs> you don't know me. I'm Blackwall, now Rainier. Cole moved like a shadow that also moved like a knife. A shadow wearing a hat where dreams came to die. It's a riddle, he whispered. A cold riddle that gnaws at your mind, but you'll feel better when it's gone. That makes as much sense as anything Cole says. This is fantastic. <laughs> mm. Do you place your herald above the law, Ambassador? Whose law, my lady? Josephine's eyes glittered like angry opals. The law destroyed by rebellion, by civil war, by poor fiscal management. We are the law. We've still got like a uh, Cullen, right? We left our mark on Adamant, but the dust hadn't settled, and neither had Harding. I can offer you a drink if I catch your meaning. If you caught my meaning. You'd have offered a double. What is even happening here? <laughs> They're setting up something. We got Cullen as well somewhere in here. Is he going to do a soulless one too? The Iron Bull was a great slab of muscle with horns that could hang a tapestry. One eye scanned for threats while the other hid behind an eye patch like a Chantry sister's old sins. Come on. He barked, not looking back as he entered. The dancer with the great rack comes on in five. That is spot on, actually. Varric knows his friends, right? <laughs> he writes them well. <laughs> They're written with their actual names this time, unlike uh, Hard and Hightown. The commander had the look of a Templar who had seen the worst of humanity, yet still had the time to style his hair. This is unjust a war, he said, his gaze steely like a dull blade. It's the only war. Cullen! That's Cullen! <laughs> Without even being named, you obviously know what it is. There he is. wore a class of handsome sneer cultivated by a thousand years of Tevinter elitism. The name's Dorian, he glared. D-O-R-I-A-N. Spell it right, you marble-headed lump, or it's toad time. A toad? That's hardly credible. Remember all the times where Dorian turned people into toads? Pun, mage staff crackling like the city after a good man's murder. You're crazy, the Red Templar cried in terror. Moonlight glinted off ears like the knives you never see coming. Better to fade out than burn away. Ugh, Varric. <laughs> Better to burn out than fade away. There it is. Where am I? <laughs> oh, here it is. 
The seeker clutched at my vest, her tears as desperate as they were pitiful. Varric, I was wrong about everything, she sobbed. Could you find it in your noble heart to forgive me? That dwarf. <laughs> he, he, he put me in the book. <laughs> I'm in the book. I am reading the shit out of this. <laughs> oh, I love that it just takes the whole credits. To all of you who played Dragon Age Inquisition, who laughed, cried, and reached out on social media, who made fan art and comics and cosplay and jokes, thank you. Dragon Age Inquisition was a labor of love. Without you, it would never have been possible. Your support and your passion touched us deeply. We hope that in some small way, this game touched you as well. Bear your blade and raise it high. The Dragon Age team felt. Honestly, fucking felt. Absolutely brilliant. Outside of the massive over overwhelming, like outside of like the massive overwhelming uh, open world stuff, uh, totally and absolutely felt. Uh, the story, the characters, the lore, how everything weaved together and interacted with one another, perfect. I loved it. I loved seeing so many new so many new places in Thetis, seeing Olay, like all these new DLC locations, being able to go into these, the deepest of roads, getting to traverse the Alluvian crossroads, you know, everything just so exceptional and really mind blowing revelations from someone who started at the beginning and came all the way through. There is so many rewarding things in this game uh, by playing through the first two games and I am so happy to be sitting here and also so sad to be sitting here bringing a Dragon Age Inquisition playthrough to a close. 58 episodes. Now I am almost entirely convinced that there was supposed to be voice lines during that epilogue scene but you got to hear me voice it instead because uh, that is my own personal touch. <laughs> it's some Apocalypse playthrough, baby. It's uh, that's when you know. Uh, it really felt like there was voices there. If there wasn't, I'd be kind of surprised that they would leave it up for us to read. Um, but I'm going to restart the game and just like kind of go through that again and see if there's anything different. Um, so we'll check that out because it was being a little strange, but absolutely adored this experience it was amazing to reach the end of trespasser here elven law being my favorite since dragon age origins and being so invested in how beautiful it was going all the way to trespasser and seeing the truth of the matter was a big old slap in the face and you're like oh no it's worse than we could have ever imagined um but honestly it was it was handled it was handled perfectly. Uh, I loved the character interactions in this DLC, coming face to face with Solus, where I'm not sure if the arm was removed maybe by us, by him, with some form of Dreadwolf magic, or whether we were saved. It's, it's hard to tell because it just kind of fades to black and we just have no arm. Um, but we survived. I genuinely thought that we could have witnessed a, the death of our main character with this anchor. And it would have been so tragic to try and change his mind right at the end, only to perish. And then the fate of everyone else pulled into question as nobody else, you know, would have interacted with him if we died. That would have been uh, honestly quite crazy. Uh, Solus is determined as ever to restore the world as it once was a millennia ago. Which is massive. The implications of that is huge because that brings... Golden City stuff, the Maker, the Fade, rea the physical world, the, the veil separating it all. Where did, you know, where did it all start? And going all the way back to the beginning. It's it's such a it's such a crazy premise with three games of build up going into this one. And yeah, like I said, it really is a situation where this game is just setting up the next one. This game came out almost 10 years ago. This was a 2014 game with a massive setup for a sequel that we don't have a release date for yet, which is insane. That's wild. 
like putting yourself in the shoes of someone who finished this around the time that Trespasser came out, I'd assume 2015, like maybe a year later. I don't know when Trespasser released. Um, and they're like, oh boy, oh boy, I can't wait for what's next from Bioware. And that is like Mass Effect Andromeda and Anthem. The next two releases from Bioware, and they've been cooking Dragon Age, Dreadwolf, and the next Mass Effect game in the oven ever since. Uh, there is a lot riding on the next Dragon Age game. That's pressure, baby. That's a 10 year gap between uh, uh, between games in a really massive series. Like, that's that's huge. That's absolutely insane. And then even when the next Mass Effect comes out, that's such a significant gap between the last one uh, as well talking Mass Effect 3 because it's obviously Andromeda is its own separate thing but Mass Effect 3 at least closed things off as it was but Dragon Age Inquisition as a trilogy is not a trilogy it's a here well can't wait till the next one and it's been almost 10 years unbelievable uh I won't say my farewells just yet because I'm going to check and see uh if our game had a bit of an oopsie in terms of that epilogue because it genuinely feels like there should have been a voice there we'll check it out now okay so I just went to go and check it's not voiced uh so we voiced it ourselves so the good news is wasn't glitched it really kind of felt strange because Morrigan voiced the last one I was like trying to think about who could voice this one I was like Part of me wanted it to be voiced by Solus, you know, like just to like rub it in even more. But honestly, fucking incredible. Uh, I loved Inquisition so much. I was genuinely really burned out on the game at one point and almost took a break and almost walked away from the game for a while before coming back. And uh, that never happened. Clearly, there was an episode where I was like, guys, like I might take a break. Uh, I reached a point of uh, I reached a low point and that wasn't a fault of the game's story or writing or characters or anything. It was a fault of the gameplay system. It was like, there's just, there was just so much to do. And for someone who wants to do as much as possible, I'm reading the lore, I'm discussing the theories, I'm really giving this like 110%. I really hope that you feel that effort that goes into a playthrough like this. So whenever I'm not feeling good and I almost wanted to take a break, I was feeling so disappointed in myself that I was going to like let people down by not being able to give 110% in those moods. I was like, oh man, I don't know if I can do it. But then I met Inquisitor Emeridan and I was like, fuck it, man, let's go. Like, <laughs> so going through the jaws of Hakon immediately, I was like, maybe some DLC will like really pick up my spirits and we'll do that. And I was still feeling a bit low on the experience because it was just still a lot to do. But yeah, Inquisitor Meriden comes in, you get this big truth bomb, it's amazing. And then you're like, okay, I'm back in it again, I'm feeling good. And then it just started to have a nice little, like, nice little trail all the way to the ending. Like, after that, I didn't feel burnt out at all, I didn't feel low. It was like a consistent ride from that point. So there was a couple of low points feeling a little bit of burnout but we really powered through got a second wind and saw it through to the end without uh any breaks there which was genuinely uh, incredible it was amazing i loved the journey i can't even believe i can't even believe it like we've, we've played dragon age for a whole year and i have made it my life the lore is is wired to my brain you know there's just so much floating around in here and i'm just i am very happy that we do have another game to look forward to i hope it comes out i hope it comes out soon because i am very very excited to continue this one especially with how this game ends like <laughs> it's like see you next time uh hopefully soon definitely not 10 years from now right right uh but uh, again just an incredible thank you for joining me on this journey I appreciate you all so much for your support and the kind words have not been lost on me. I really appreciate the amount of love that has gone into uh, watching and partaking in this series alongside me playing it. And I will never forget this. I honestly will never forget it. It's It's got to be one of my favorite series that I've played on the channel. I've already told uh, everybody since Dragon Age Origins that this is my favorite Bioware series. 
I decided that in Dragon Age Origins, by the way. That's how good it was. And it wasn't even at the end of Origins. Like, only a few episodes in, we were, like, walking through Lothering. And I was like, this is my favorite Bioware game. <laughs> you know? It's fantastic. The lore here is incredible. And how many times will I say that? A thousand more times, baby. A thousand more times. Uh, I am hotly anticipating the next game now. Uh, still got to wrap my head around everything that's going on here, but there were some significant, significant lore drops, theories out the wazoo. I got so many things to think about out of how things connect with one another. Um, but yeah, next game. Soulless Dreadwolf, villain, antagonist, I guess, for lack of a better word. And we need to stop him from ending the world as we know it, because he just wants elves to be great again. Make Arlath and great again, he says, and we must change his mind. Uh, but again, from the bottom of my heart, so much love to you all. Thank you for being here. I hope you've enjoyed the series. I really, really hope I've done it justice, and I really hope that you've enjoyed the ending. And I will see you in the next Dragon Age game one day, and I'm sure that we're going to do so many more things like read the books and maybe react to the absolution i think it's called like a, a little tv thing I, I still can't remember what that is a little animation absolution um and we're also going to do a dragon age wrap-up stream as well just before i forget i'll chuck this at the end there will be a dragon age series wrap-up live stream i'm going to be reacting to things we're going to be discussing the game talking about theories we're all going to hang out collectively together and talk about dragon age uh, maybe see some things that i missed discuss things about the game and the series and we can now freely share things about what we think about the next game so keep your eyes peeled on the channel for a scheduled dragon age wrap-up stream and uh make sure to say hello because i'd love to see you there thank you so so much for watching the dragon age series on the channel and i will see you next time